Hello everyone, Kerry Griff is here, or as some of you know me, Kerry the Crafter. Now, um, recently, a few weeks ago anyway, I did a challenge by one of my lovely subscribers called Daniela, and she said she'd like to see me create a background using olive green and ice, ice blue. Um, I thought, okay, let's have a go at this. So it's not a colour combination I would normally do, so I did it, and this was the resulting piece. Now, although it's not classed as a fail, for me it's not classed as a success either. I didn't achieve what I was supposed to do. I, I sort of lost myself, and as you can see, I dipped back into the colours I usually go for. I was conscious of the time constraint, which is a one, one hour video, and I started just grabbing to make, make the piece work. Because if you've seen that video, I've struggled, and I'll put the video in the, in the underneath there, there's going to be a description. In the description, I'll either say read more, or there'll be a little gravy, click on that. In the description will be the original video to this one. So, um, Little did I know that the video would intrigue several other artists as well, and other people have done it as well. Um, I think Paula did it, Darcy did it, Darcy did it, I think Anne Marie's done it, a few people, because it's an unusual colour combination. Anyway, I digress. I've decided to do a take two, or a reboot, or a have another go. Joe sort of thing. So I'm going to redo this page and after watching how the others handled it, I've gleaned a little more knowledge and I've gone, hmm, I'm ready to retry that. And also Daniela threw me um, a few comments going, well actually I didn't use the olive green strictly as it was. I did dilute it down and I did warm it up with another colour. So I know I've got a little wider expanse of that. So I'm going to do that in this video. So fingers crossed at the end of it, we'll have a piece that more readily represents olive green and ice blue and I still don't have any ice blue so I'm, I have to make my ice blue up again. Another comment that's come on the back of this too is I've had lots of people say can you show us how you cut this up? Um, I wasn't sure I was going to cut it up but as you want me to cut it up I'll cut it up. So what I'm going to do is in a separate video it'll be a little bonus video and hopefully I'll get to release it on the same day at the same time as this video um, it'll be just a short video. It'll literally be me um, cutting this up. I'll share a template with you as to the dimensions of what I'm cutting up, but we'll take a look at cutting that up. So I'll also put the link to that one in the description box below. So without further ado, that sounds a bit posh, doesn't it? Without further ado, we're going to move to the overhead and let's get stuck in, convert another bit of 12 by 12 and see if I can make it prettier or at least more in theme than this one. See you in two seconds guys. So here we are at the overhead. I pulled out a bit of unused 12 by 12. I'm going to keep that aside. I don't know why, probably because it's going to be harder to cover with paint. And I'm not sure what I'm going to use this for eventually anyway. If it was to be a journal cover, um, I'm less likely to use this Christmas pattern and more likely to use that as the inside of a journal. So I don't know what's going to happen to it. So. Right, so Daniela, I'm hoping to get this right. Darcy, thank you for your contributions. And Paula and Anne-Marie, I've taken things from what you've done and I'm hoping let's make this one more of a success than the other one was. Um, the other one wasn't a fail, it just wasn't what I wanted. So I have the olive green. Now, I know now that I can add something to that. I don't have ice blue. So what I've got is I've got different shades of blue and even a sage because I thought a sage might be a nice in-between colour for those. Um, I've got a collection of little sponges because yes, you know I'm going to use stencils. And I've just pulled out, without having to go through the whole book every single time, I've just pulled out some stencils, some of which may work, some of which may not. Um, I don't know, I just pulled out a selection. So we're just going to play it by ear. If you're interested in um, what's in my stencil collection, I'm going to make a video and I'm going to do a complete flip through because so many of you have asked for it. Not something I would have dreamed of doing, but anyway, just know it's going to be done. I've got my trusty plastic card and I've got my damp cloth ready to do clean up. Let's get this puppy started. I want this to work this time and I'm feeling very positive about it. I'm going to start the way I started the last one. I'm going to put a bit of um, buttermilk down. Uh, 
let's do it on here. I'm also going to put down as a base color because I took this from um, a couple of the people I saw doing it that adding the base color into the background to start with helps connectivity all the way through it. And I've got some of this sage color as well. And I'm just going to put that on there as well. So not putting any blue you'll note at the moment, but that's just a personal choice. I just want to use my card just to get some color on here. Um, not overly caring whether it's vertical, horizontal, whatever. Some of these paints are transparent. Some of these paints are not transparent. So we know that over time we'll end up building and covering up the background. But you know, if we don't, then we don't. That's that's a whole nother thing. So I know there's, there's a lot going to be going on here because that's the way I work, as you all know. So thank you very much for all your comments. It, it was very interesting reading everyone's feedback and comments on this challenge the first time round. Um, subsequently, someone else has sent me um, another two colour combination and said, do you fancy trying this one? So I won't tell you what the colours are um, because I don't want to give it away. But yes, um, who was it? Connie Lee Jackson, I believe it is. Connie, I'm going to do yours. Um, I just need to get get a little bit further ahead with my video recording um, because we've just had our bathroom done. Well, yes, we have a complete bathroom done and the kitchen is currently being done where it's having a good old facelift. Um, I couldn't do a bathroom and the kitchen all in one year. So if you do hear knocking, it's the lovely workman in my kitchen giving it a facelift that has been needed for at least 20 years, let's put it that way. So hopefully my head's not been in shot on all of this. I realise I'm, I'm leaning quite far forward. So um, as you can see, I've just basically gone on and covered up the majority of this paper. Just adding bits of interest to it as, as I want to. Now, I also think that I'm going to make sure I keep this clean because I think last time I tended to muddy my colours by not keeping... Am I shaking everything? I hope not. By not keeping everything clean as I went. So let's move that out of the way. Just clean up this mat. Not that this mat's ever going to be the cleanest thing in the world. This is my arty mat, so I'm not worried. Right, so here we are with this bit. Now... Um, I think now I'm going to put some of the blue on. I'm using chalk paint for no other reason. It's the right colour. Um, I don't have any um, ice blue. And the, the challenge is olive green and ice blue. Well, I don't have any ice blue. It's not really a colour I can foresee me buying because I've seen those who actually have the ice blue. And it looks like a very silvery colour to me. Um, so if I'm going to use anything, I do have silver. So what I'll do is I'll add a little bit of blue to the silver. And I think that will be my equivalent of ice blue. So, and that's probably a very good point to be honest with you. And I've seen quite a few people do this and I always forget to say this. Um, you don't always have to have the right colors, guys. Um, have a go, try mixing your own. It's like when I saw Darcy from Oh Lord, Darcy's Misadventures in Mixed Media, I think the channel name is. I always get a straw. I'll try and actually what I might do is I might try and find the videos of other people doing this challenge. And if I can, I'll put them in the description box, which is down there somewhere. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me, bit of a frog in the throat. Right. Um if there's one thing I learned from them, as with others, is try mixing your own colours. Like, I mean, Darcy didn't have olive. And so Darcy took some, I want to say it was Kelly Green, I think it was. And she added some, um, I think it was red to it and took it down a shade to get like a dirty olive colour. Um, actually, let's let that dry for a second and form this up. 
and she did a wonderful job. It looked looked a really olive colour. Um, and as you've seen, I will mix silver and blue together to get my ice blue. So have an experiment. You don't don't always need to buy every single colour. As I said, I can't see me buying ice blue. It's not a colour I would probably go for. So I'm quite happy to not have it. Right, um, let's see. So that's on there. Talking about the silver, this is the silver I'll be using. Can you see it? Yeah. I'm wondering whether it's too early to put a little bit of silver on here. Just a little bit more of the silver on here than that. I just had an idea. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my sponges and I'm going to take the silver and I'm going to sponge it in areas. That way, not only do I get the silver on there, I actually get um, a little bit of texture from the sponge. You'll also note, anyone who's seen me often enough will know I do this a lot, is I keep turning my piece of card around. I like doing that for the simple reason that that means I don't concentrate on one area and I get, let's call it a 360 design at the end of it. There you go, that's given that a little bit of a frosty look to it. So we'll probably do that later on as well. So I'm just going to keep this sponge to one side. Actually, I might keep it to one side with the silver, just to remind me that that's what that's for. Now, so, dum dum dum. Got light. I'd like to go a bit darker. That That's not the colour I want. Let's see if I can pull in something that's a little bit more of a... Blue. I thought I had a Prussian somewhere. <clears throat> I do have Prussian blue. There you go. I knew I bought it somewhere. So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to alternate between light and dark, adding streaks of both into it. I also want to add some white to my... This is a, um, a big ceramic tile, by the way, guys. Nothing special. Just picked it up in the um, discontinued aisle in my local hardware store. I use, um, why does that paint go back on there? That would be a bother if that doesn't seal. Um, I, I use ceramic tiles a lot for my paint palettes. It means I'm, I've just got two of these. It means I can use them and I'm not worried that um, they're going to get damaged. I also like the fact that they're not made of plastic. So... I've probably got far too much Prussian blue out here, but I don't mind that too much. I'll just, I'll leave it on here and maybe use it afterwards. So it would be so easy to go dark too soon. And that's not my intent, as I've just said. I'm gonna pick up some of the white and work the white through it. All the time I'm trying to think Think frosty colours, like Frosty the Snowman. Yeah, whatever. Kerry's not had enough coffee today. Please ignore the singing. It will go away eventually. So, trying to bring this all together. I'm already liking where this is going. I, I really am. I'm, I'm already beginning to enjoy this colour color combination. And I haven't really done a whole left, lot of green. That was one of the things I did on the last one, which was a mistake. I kind of forgot what the brief was. I kind of forgot that I was supposed to be doing olive green and um, ice blue. I, I kind of, as I looked at my clock going, oh, we're coming nearer to time. What did I do? I immediately started reaching for colours that I knew worked. I, I reverted to my own style. And, and I completely forgot what I was going for. Right. Let's just smear that that way. Right, I'm liking that so far. Right, I need to clean up, but that can probably stay. I might use it instead of using black for a bit of detail stuff on one of the last things. Or maybe the next thing. I don't know. I mean, I'm already liking where this is going. And I'm wondering whether... This could be quite a short video. Right, let's lift that up and over to there a second. Let's put it up there, actually. So, um, let's see what I was going to say. Uh, so thank you, da um, Daniela, for... I don't want to call it a challenge. It was a request, because it's not a challenge, because we're not both doing it. Um, 
But thank you for the request. Yes, I am open to subscribers asking for maybe different colour schemes in certain ways and certain videos. I have a book. Actually, can I reach it? I do have a book. This book is my book. And as you can see, every one of these is a video idea. Every one of these will eventually become a video. And what I do is if anyone ever suggests anything or requests anything, bang, in that book it goes. Because I can have a memory like a sieve. I'm, I am more likely to forget something than I am to remember it. So it's really good that I write them down. And I would actually recommend that for anyone. Write the stuff down. I mean, there's no need for you to fill your brain up full of stuff you're trying to remember. Literally, just write it down. There's no shame in that whatsoever. I mean, I always write stuff down, no matter what. I mean, the, I'm post-it note boy here in the house. There's post-it notes everywhere. Even in my planner, there's post-it notes. And that's probably one of the reasons... I'm using silver again, by the way. That's probably one of the reasons why, in my planner, everything is written in pencil. Um, because I know that it can be moved. And then what I do is once I've actually done something, I write in my planner that it's been done, but I then write it in pen. And there's a couple of reasons I write in pencil. One, as I've said, because it can be moved, but not forgotten. So I just basically dump my brain or things to do into my planner that way. And then when it comes time to write them in pen, I write them in pen um, because sometimes I need to look back and see what date I did something like car insurance or house insurance or submitted ideas or paid an invoice or stuff. But not only that, seeing a list of stuff on a page that I've done, there's a great sense of accomplishment because a lot of the time when you work for yourself or you're a creative person, you sometimes at the end of the day think, I haven't done anything, I've not achieved anything. But then, you know what, the moment you start listing it, it's a case of, hey, I did a lot today. Um, that's good. And I, I use my planner a lot. I mean, I, I'm definitely a planner person. Um, and my planners end up as works of art because what I do is any spare space in my planner that doesn't get used, because used, obviously the calendar dates, I then do collage pieces or I do small bits of art. So it becomes more of a glue book eventually. Right, I am really loving where this is going. And I think what I really need to do now is to turn you guys off for two seconds and to get this dry. Um, and I need to think about how am I going to keep that from... Actually, I have an idea. I'm just going to take a bit of, damp, uh, bit of kitchen towel. Where's my spritzer? And I'm just going to spray a bit of water on it. and lay it over the top of that paint. Now what that will do, it means that the paint is no longer exposed to the air so it's not going to dry out. It'll just preserve it. Yes, I'll probably lose a little bit onto the kitchen towel, kitchen napkin, but that's not a problem because it means I can use the paint underneath. Right, you're going to be paused for two seconds. I'm going to pull the hairdryer out, I'm going to get this totally dried and then go. So here I am back again. Now this is dry to the touch. I'm sure it's not dry all the way through to the core, but it's dry enough for me to work on. My paint is still moist under there. I can see it's moist, so that's fine there. That can sit. Now, I want to add some olive green at this point. It's all about layers with me. You know that. Now, I don't want dark olive green at this stage. I, I want olive green, but I want to make sure it's paler working to darker. So I think I'm going to manipulate this a little bit with a little bit of white. So it'll be basically the same color, but a paler version of itself. Um, <clears throat> and I'm gonna use this stencil. Now this is one of my own stencils that I cut many years ago. It's not part of my new range. It's basically one I did probably about eight or nine years ago. I like using it, you can see it's used. Now, there isn't plans to make one of these for PM Artist Studio. However, if you think you would like to 
purchased one of these or you think that you would have a use for one of these, let me know in the comments and what I'll do is I'll talk to PM Artist Studio and maybe if they're willing, we'll, we'll reproduce this. Um, I find it really useful, but I'm not sure whether everyone will. So I'm just going to, I'll leave that out there and it's up to you guys. And no, no promises because I'm not even sure the PM Artist Studio actually has one of their own that will equally do as well. So I'm just using a bit of sponge and I'm going to mix the colour up on my palette here. Can we still see? We can still see. So I'm getting this sort of paler version. Now, my idea is I just want patches of this. I'm not looking for perfect circles. I'm looking for patches. I want to pick up some of the darker, some of the lighter, all on the same sponge, just to work in. So I've got something in the background. I'm also going to work in areas. I don't want the whole thing covered. I just want areas. And I don't mind going off the edge either. I find that attractive. And as you know, I normally work in patches of threes when I do stuff like this. So, you see, it's just in there. It's just subtle. I do think I want more down here. And I'm looking towards this sort of run of bubbles here. Or circles. I can't remember what I called this, actually. It's been so long since I made this stencil. I can't remember what it was called. I think it was... I don't know. It, it's gone from my mind. Let's put it that way. So just by picking up alternately dark and light, it will mean that I will be putting down different shades of the same colour, tones, whatever it is. I will still get confused, even though people have sent me things that will tell me what they are. I'm, I'm terrible. I should know these things. and I just don't naturally know them. Okay, see, let's see if I can put this down somewhere. <clears throat> so if I raise this up so you can see where I've picked up different color combinations, it's shaded through those. Okay, that's subtle, loving that. I'd like to put another thing in here now. Um, <clears throat> I'm thinking about using this. Now this is, oh Lord, um, it's something Southwestern and it's a PM Artist Studio stencil. Not one of mine, but it is, very useful as you've seen I'm using it here today. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to line that up along the edge so that straight edge is on that straight edge and I'm going to pick up a little more of the green now and less of the white and just bring this in basically to almost frame, frame things out I like that I like things have got an organic look, but I also like the fact that look there's a bit of structure in there as well. Um, quite like a piece along there, and I'm going to repeat the same one in different areas. I'm going to come in with a reasonably darker version of olive this time, just to give me more depth. I'm going to do one more patch over here, but I'm going to do something slightly different here. I'm actually just going to come down the side and I'm not intending for it to be a bar like that. I just want a piece running right down the side. I'm going to pick up a variety of the greens now just to use this up, just to bring it into play. Now, if I had no camera pointed at me at this moment in time. What I would do is, while this was drying, I'd be using this up on postcards, I'd be using it up on ATCs, I'd be using it up on other things. So it can be a little wasteful when I'm using paint on screen because I can't always use it all up. Okay, so I'm loving that. That's given me a nice subtlety. Again, I've got a bit there. I'm just going to put this dampness over there. Don't mind that that blue is showing up. I've got my green to one side. Right, I've got blue in here and I've got green in here. I just want to pull in my colour wheel. Someone did ask me what was my favourite colour wheel, by the way. This is called So Easy, that's S-E-W-E-A-S-Y. I believe it's a quilting colour wheel. And I like it because if I'm using 
one of these color wheels. Now I'm trying to match it to a color. I'm trying to do it to the edge. However, with the apertures, I can put this down and really focus on the areas I'm looking at. And that's, that's why I prefer this one. So whoever it was that asked me, because they were asking advice on buying one, this is the one that I, I usually use. So I'm looking at this sort of color. So it's telling me this sort of area here is a complementary. So it's sort of an orangey, earthy tone. So I'm quite happy to go down that route at the moment. So let's have a little look. <clears throat> I got this camel color, which is okay. I'd like to warm that up with something and maybe, okay, let's be experimental. Right, I'm gonna turn this around so that I don't inadvertently dip my hand in my own paint. I'm gonna put a bit of the orange down. Um, this is Bright Orange by Deco Art Americana. And I'm just talking about a little bit of it here. I don't want a huge amount. And I'm going to mix it with this camel colour. This is a relatively new colour for me by Arteza. Um, it is very much a neutral, but it's an interesting neutral. Right, looking at this, what do I want next? I think I just want to put some patches in. So I'm going to take my sponge, I'm going to fold it. This, by the way, guys, was like a big car wash sponge. My local store sells them for a pound. Um, if you go to my inexpensive store, like you'd have a dollar store, we have a pound world and a pound land, I think they're called. And I can buy three baby sponges for a pound. That's about a dollar twenty-five in America, and I couldn't tell you what it is in Australia. Probably more considerable, more than that. Um, and I just cut it into pieces and then I just fold it over or I use the ends. Some people use makeup sponges. That's I, I struggle using makeup sponges because they're just not, not my thing. Right, I'm going to come in and patches of this will just bring this to life. Now, I know for a fact that this is an opaque. So even mixing it with the orange, it's still an opaque. So I'm going to be quite careful that I don't put too much paint on because what that will do is it will blot out absolutely any amount of detail that I've got that I want to show through. I'm loving where this is going. This is feeling so much better than the last time I did this. So Again, just bouncing the sponge up and down quite gently on the surface. I don't I don't want to leave impressions of the sponge. I just want to add like almost fog to the scene or mist, just just something, even just a little vignetting on the corners. I think a little bit more in there will do. I don't mind that going over that, so I might be doing a bit more of that. Just because the moment you go over something, it pushes it one step into the background. I might do a bit of that there as well. Just, oops. Okay, and I think just a little bit up here. Again, don't want to get too carried away with this or it just changes the character. And I'm liking the character of it so far, right? The sponge can go to one side. Um, sometimes I wash them. Sometimes I just don't bother washing them. I just throw them in the bin because they're so inexpensive. And trying to wash and dry something that small can be a bit of a pain in the bot. But if I'm doing a big batch of colours, I'll usually have a bowl of water close to me and I'll just throw them in there and they soak up the water and they stay moist. And then I just give them a good old squeeze -ease in my hand until they run clean. Okay, I'm going to leave the orange there. Let's have a little look. Okay, I'm liking where that's going. I want to be a bit cautious here because I'm feeling I want to reach for yellow. And I think that's possibly the wrong thing to reach for. I think I'd like to add a little bit of white to this just to streak some white through this. Just, just a little bit. Just to connect things together again. So picking up my trusty card again, loaded up just a little bits on the edge and just, it's almost like dry brushing, but doing it with a credit card instead or a door card. Oops. <laughs> 
flick it out of the way. Bit of that with that as well. Okay, we're getting nice things pushed into the background, right? This needs a bit of a clean off, or else I will pick it up on the next one. Let's get that a bit of a wipe off there. So I think it's time I looked at another stencil now and I can go darker again now. So I've got I've got lighter, then I've gone slightly darker, then slightly lighter again, playing around with the pushing things back and forward syndrome. Um, I did pull out this one, but as I've got triangles, out, I don't think I'm going to use the diamonds. I think it would just it would jar my eye to look at those. Um, these are pretty much top layers, and I do quite like this when I use this. I wonder, right, time to rescue my blue paint, right, that little bit can go in the bin. So what I'm going to do, let's turn this around again so you can see it, is I'm going to put blue paint all over the place now. See, that's what happens. I've got blue paint there. Bear with me, I've just got blue on the underneath of this and I don't want to transfer it all over the place. It's the good thing about ceramic tile, completely washable. Impervious to most things. So what I'm going to do, this is just a bit of plastic netting. I, I picked it up on my local craft store. I think it's something to do with either the rug making or cross stitching or that sort of technique. So what I'm going to do is let's pull that over a bit. I'm going to smear this out a bit and then I'm going to come in and rub this in it and just come in and press it down. So as you can see, I'm just transferring that texture visually onto this paper. I quite like where this is going. There's this patch down here that's kind of bothering me. Just get that last little bit over there. I think that's okay. Okay, that worked out really well. I'm glad I did that. I was a bit hesitant about that. Go on, off you come. Okay, that's changed. I'm loving this. This is looking really delicate, right? This, just get myself a bit of a cloth and just wipe off the excess. I don't bother cleaning things like this. It's it's plastic. I can just throw it in a washing machine, a washing up bowl anytime I want. Okay, right, we've got that much done. I need to clean this out of the way now or else everything I put on there is gonna turn out blue. Not my choice. I think we're not far done, to be honest, guys. I'd be quite happy if I'm not far done. This this feels like it's it's gone in the correct direction for once. Right, I really am conscious that I want to keep things light on here. And I think in saying that, I want to do, and yes, Kerry's going to do bubble wrap. I want to do just the smallest patch of bubble wrap, but I want to do it in white. Now, this is the bubble wrap I always use. The paint builds up on your bubble wrap, and eventually as you're transferring colours over, it'll start coming back off in your artwork. I enjoy that. However, I don't want that going on there, but I don't mind any of this going on there. So let's just get a little bit of white onto my mat as I did before. I'm going to use my credit card just to smear it out a bit so I've got something I can pick up. I'm going to come in and just put it down, touch it off. Put it down, touch it off. I'm not particularly thinking threes here. I'm particularly thinking where the heck does it need to go on my piece of art. Try not to be too uniform in the matter. And I think that that's good. Oh, there you go. That bit came off. I don't like it there, though. That can just get out of there. OK, I think just that one bit up there needs something. Okay, loving that. 
Right. Clean up on there. Right, I really do need to stop for a second and just think now. I don't know about you, but that I think is 99.9.999% finished. I'm very conscious I've got a lot of blue, but I haven't got a lot of olive. I also love this colour, but I don't like the way it's popping out at me. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a bit more silver and mute this colour down a bit with silver. Just that will, it won't read as silver, it will just read as a bit of shimmer on, on the page. So if I just come over, you can see what I mean now. So I've just taken almost the, the acidness of that out. And I think I'm going to do that on quite a few patches around here. Um, it wasn't a mistake to put it on. It was a good thing to put it on. It's just that I think I don't want it to, I don't want it to pull focus. I, I want to make sure that everything on this page is there for the reason of enhancing the colours that have gone over them. this corner down here that looks a little stark to me I'd like to just take that take that down a notch I'm so loving this right currently this is a little bit wet so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause you for two seconds again will I pull out the hairdryer and I'm gonna get this completely dry. Well, as dry as it needs to be. Because if I don't do that and I lay another stencil on top of this, which is my next step, what's gonna happen is gonna stick and pull up the, the one of the layers of the paper or the card. So bear with me, we're gonna do a two second stop again. Um, I might need to clean this off and I'll keep the green, but I think the orange needs to go as well, just to give myself some clean working space. So I'll be back in two seconds, guys. So here I am back again. It's dry to the touch. I know it's probably not dry all the way through the core, but it's dry enough to the touch. I've got some dark green there. Well, I've got olive green there, which is the one of the prerequisites for this. I'm going to add a little bit more to it and I'm going to use the olive the colour it's meant to be this time. Now in my last one I went to, I want to say it was a magenta or a dark claret colour. Um, at this point I even reached for black and I think that's where things started to go wrong in the original video. Don't forget the link to the original video is actually in the description box guys. Um, and I think that was one of my mistakes. What I should have done is use the olive as the drama on the top layer. Now I did pull out wonky net and I thought I was going to use this but I really think it'd be a, it would be the wrong thing to do as I've already got the mesh on there I'm going to leave that off but it does leave one of my favorite um, stencils and this one I always get this wrong I think it's by Lavinia stamps if they do stencils as well even though their name is stamp um, and I want to say it's called Feather Ferns and I absolutely adore this one. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to use the green and I'm going to do this in patches. Now the patches I'm going to choose are pretty much the patches that have no detail but I will do some in the corners as well. So again just taking sections of this not planning to do absolutely every part of it just taking some of the colour and tapping it down now, I've not got a lot of um, paint on my sponge. I would rather build up the layers than come in and put a big layer of paint down immediately and it seeps underneath. Now, there are no guarantees in life that it's not going to seep underneath anyway, but I'd rather lower the risk if I can. See, that's what I'm talking about. So, I want a little bit more by there as well. Let's do that little curly cue. Pick up some of that just to go over the top of that orange camel colour we had, which means that because it was lighter, it's given me a good background for that. Right, this area here needs some, so I think I'm gonna do 
quite a large area without going over the top totally. And I like to work in circles. That way I build up the colour and as I'm working in a circle, the outer edges of the circle are blended and a lot lighter. Let's bring that over there a bit and a little bit up there. And lift that off. That's fabulous. I think by here could do with just a hint. And just a little touch like that is enough to carry the design down. There's a patch here that I really would like to put something into. And there's a swirl in this stencil here. It tells you how often I use it. I know, I know the patterns within the pattern. And I like that swirl. It's almost like um, one of those things you see on picture frames, like that were originally based on agapanthus leaves. You know, all of those gold gilt frames and coats of arms, all of those curly cues are pretty much built on that. That was lovely. This could do with this a little bit by there. I am going to have to do a patch, not dead centre, that would be the wrong thing to do. But maybe a little bit over here somewhere, actually there's probably where it's needed. Let's be careful about this now, I could, I could overkill this. And that's not my intent. Sorry, I've gone quiet because I'm thinking, guys. I, I, when I know I'm getting close to completing a piece, I tend to go quiet because I, I really, at this point, I don't want to ruin it. I'm loving this. I'm loving where this has gone. And I'm just... That just needs a little bit to break that up. Just see, so it's only one or two little tiny pieces in there, but it's enough to bring that colour through. And I think this little bit here needs something, and that had some already. It's all about the layers. I can't tell you how often I've said it's all about the layers, but for me, it is all about the layers. And I think, I think I'm gonna call that done. Actually, no, I want that little bit there. It's just gonna annoy me if I don't do something with it. Just a subtle little bit down there. Right, let's take this out of the way because it's going to get going to get masses of paint all over me. Let's just wipe my fingers so I don't inadvertently do something nasty and stupid like put my fingers in it. And to do that and give this a bit of a dry. Yeah, I need to buy a couple of extra mats. I go through these mats a lot. I use them because they're so durable. I can cut on them, paint on them. I can do most stuff on them. But aesthetically, they're not the best looking thing when they get to this stage and worse on a video. But you know what? You all understand because you're all artists as well. I think that is doggone beautiful. I, I can proudly say I think I accomplished it. Daniela, that's my version of Olive and Ice Blue. I am so happy with that. You have no idea how happy I am about that. Okay, so all it leaves is for me for just to say goodbye. So I'm Kerry, that's C-E-R-I, The Crafter. Until next time, take care, guys. Bye-bye.